Hello everyone, I mentioned a couple of videos ago when I was doing a tour of these beds outside here about um, how vegetation at this time of the year is dying off around in the surrounding area and we're artificially growing all these things or in, growing them all close together and giving pests somewhere to, to come and reside and somewhere to come and eat because we're growing these plants. So things like pigeons, for example, they can come down, and these are, these are sprouts of the brassica family. They can come along and they can eat these and start pecking away at them. So I was preparing the beds down where I've got kale and broccoli down there, ready to put nets over for when the local vegetation dies down and the pigeons want to start coming in and attacking the plants, which they will do over winter. So I was getting them ready. But there's another pest that I've just found um, on this. I found it on there yesterday and it's cabbage white butterfly larvae, so essentially caterpillars. Now it's towards the end of October and they're still here. So if they're on these sprouts, then they'll be on the kale, they'll be on the broccoli, cabbages, cauliflowers, all my Asian greens, the turnips, the radish, they're all brassica family. The whole lot I'm going to spray. And I've got this stuff. Now I know it's been difficult to find this year, this is Bacillus th thuringiensis, and the variation of this is Kirstaki. I'll write it all up on the screen and in the description. And we just want to totally douse the plant, because what happens is the caterpillar comes along and eats a bit of the leaf, and immediately starts to feel unwell, and then it dies. And it's this Bacillus thuringiensis is a naturally occurring soil bacteria and doesn't harm or hurt anything else so you've got to make sure you get the variation that is kastaki and wetting all over the top of the plant and trying to get under all of the leaves and the inside of the plant so it's all coated in this stuff and it won't do you any harm but if it's out here where it's a lot cooler, you can bet your bottom dollar, it's also in my polytunnel as well. And so all my plants in there, all my pak choys and the Asian greens, the chards, the kales that are in there, they will all need dosing with this stuff. So I'll go through a couple of bottles of it. Now, I know this Bacillus thuringiensis has been difficult to get hold of this year. I think because of lockdown and the pandemic, certain factories might have closed down production. But hopefully, for next year, hopefully it'll be back in stock and people can more readily get hold of it. I'm hoping that's the case anyway. So just something to bear in mind for next year. I say pest control. When you're growing food to eat, or even growing a garden, pest control is really a priority otherwise things will just get attacked munched eaten destroyed so as i say i've got the whole plot to go over it's going to take me a good hour and a half i would say to go over all the crops there we go <laughs> so we've dealt with pigeons and we've dealt with cabbage white butterflies both are pests and I'm really surprised at the cabbage whites at this time of year but it is what it is. The next one is slugs and snails. Now I've used this for years in fact I've had this so long I think somebody actually gave it to me years ago um, and I, I've only ever used them in a very responsible way only ever undercover and only to protect emerging seedlings only and they've tended to be look on this hanging shelf here so that where no mammals no other animals can get hold of them and cause themselves problems but now that's now a thing of the past so that's going away i'll speak to my local council and work out how to get rid of those and i'm now switching to this this is ferric phosphate and this is safe for all other animals it's uh, it targets slugs and snails the pellets are even rain fast so you could you could if you wanted to put them outside on your plot i'm not going to i'm going to use them for the same job as I always have done, just to protect emerging seedlings and young plants. Again, on my hanging shelf or wherever I've got the young plants where they're 
could be an issue but that's what i'm switching to i'll put a link underneath so you can see it do have a look around because you might get it cheaper than where i got it from um, i got it from there just purely for speed i wanted it there and then so yeah there we go and the other pest to talk about is mice and rats um, now i have used snappy traps you know your typical mouse trap that does that and, and kills them instantly but I've stopped using them uh, about a month ago because I caught a little shrew, killed a little shrew, and I wasn't happy about that because um, they're in decline. So I'm going to get some humane traps that will actually catch them and then release them well away from the, the allotment site in a fit with plenty of fields around here to where I can release them. So they'll come to no harm like that, but just move them away because they can cause an absolute massive problem especially inside a polytunnel in winter young smaller plants that are planted they'll nibble through the stems and the plant will just keel over and die anything that's got a bulb on so radishes um, beetroots carrots they will just nibble and gnaw away at them and once the skin is broken infection gets in and that rots away uh, they do tend to leave onions alone so that's a good thing the same as rabbits will leave onions alone from my experience um, but anyway, yep, that's what I'm using for slugs and snails and I'm going to look into and organise some humane traps for the rodents and that's about it for slug pre um, pest prevention over winter. <laughs> so here's my hot box. As you can see, I've taken the lid off and the front. The front's way behind me. And this is the Chinese cabbage in here. It was doing remarkably well until we had a frost last week and a couple of days later we had another one and i don't i don't i'm struggling to believe that it's the frost that's done this damage it might be the cold but there's no way i think those two light frosts we had could permeate this tunnel and permeate this hot hot box i think it might just be lower temperatures in general that's that's done this not necessarily frost but anyway now, what I can assess from this is that these three plants at the front here were planted very close together and they seem to have survived remarkably well, whereas the ones that were a bit more sparsely planted, a bit farther away from each other, have not done very well. And you can see that they would recover if we had a, a good warm spell, but I'm going to pull them. I'm going to pull all of those. I might keep sort of four or five in this area uh, and just pull the rest of these and then I can plant this area up with something else. But these are the best I've ever got, these Chinese cabbage at this time of the year. So it's a kind of a result, but I think next year when I try again, um, I'll plant them a lot, lot, lot closer, really close and see if that makes a difference. So I've tidied this bed up. Um, I've left three of the Chinese cabbage there and got a couple of rows of Florence fennel in there. Don't know how well it'll do, to be honest. Um, I've never planted them this late before in the year. We'll see, maybe the warmth of this hot box, hot box will help them get up and bulb. If not, it's foliage, foliage there and um, they're lovely in a soup or a stew or something. So I can always just treat them as a herb. So there we go, that's that done. Now, in front of this hot box is an ideal place just to slip a couple of lettuce in, just so I'm using the ground, all of it, and using these plants up, really, making way for the new plants that are following on quickly behind it. It doesn't take any time, as you can see, just to throw a couple of plants 
into a hole in the ground, <laughs> green side up, of course. And I've also got some coriander in this tray. Which I'll also plant now as well. Probably put that in that end a bit actually. There we go, a few lettuces planted. That one looks like it's dying anyway, that one. Coriander. See, I think I'll put that behind me to expose them and give them a bit of shelter. Pop these over here. So this is the kale bed. And uh, I'm going to pot, pop these coriander's into here. They'll have the protection, although they don't really need it. I feel they'll get away better with a bit of protection, a bit of warmth. And I think these kale plants will provide that. And also, of course, I've got the hot box on this side of me. Well, these will withstand freezing cold temperatures. I think they will actually freeze and then defrost and carry on. So there we have coriander planted at the end of that bed. And if we move up here swiftly, I've got some chard that I'm now going to plant in this bed. So I've given these plants better spacing than in the small tunnel and there's just four in there and the last plant in the tray went over there and I think that over there that bed will become a sort of a an odds and sods bed any, any stuff I've got left over at the end of this next week will all go in there. So in the last three videos, including this one, I've shown you my outdoor crops and including crops that are going to take us right the way through the hungry gap and into spring next year. Uh, also the indoor crops, the ones in the two tunnels, this one and the smaller one over there, um, they're now all fully planted. We've talked about uh, pest protection. Um, the only thing really left to to cover really is frost protection. Now most of the plants, or in fact all of the plants outside are all um, frost hardy anyway. Some of the ones inside, because they're cosseted, they may suffer from a, a really severe frost. So if you get really severe temperatures, you know, down into the minus, it takes no effort to sort of come down and throw a bit of fleece over just to protect things. Because they will flatten, chard will flatten, it'll flatten right down to the ground for instance. But a couple of days of warm weather and it's back up and perky again. You just lose those leaves that were on the plant. But if you put fleece over them, you'll protect them and keep them going. Even the coriander, which you might think is a warm weather herb, will take a frost and take freezing and it will regenerate and carry on again. So. Yeah, we've, we've covered all that. We've covered the outside crops, the inside crops, the pest protection. Now you've just got to grow it on and support things where necessary. Cover them when the need comes along. If you start getting attacked by pigeons, put nets on your brassicas. Uh, say if it, you get a frost, start covering th things up if you think you're going to need it. And one thing that's most important of all, which a lot of gardeners forget during the winter, because we get a lot of wind, rain, snow, hail, we sometimes forget that the ground needs watering as well. So, and the best way to do that is just to use your homegrown digits, just dip a finger in the soil and feel how damp it is underneath. And you'll soon get a gauge as to whether you need to water or not. Uh, so keep your eye on that as well. You shouldn't need to feed, your ground's already been fed before you've put uh, food in. If you see something starting to go a bit pale green or yellowing, then you might need to give a quick nitrogen boost. 
uh, and give them a feed, go ahead and do it, you know. So it's now all about maintenance. And now that I've got those things ready, the outside crops, the inside crops, I can now move on and do some more of my winter projects. I keep doing this it's because everything I need to do is back there. Um, but yeah, the, and also as plants now come out, I'm going to continue to sow seeds. I've got some a tray of seedlings up on the hanging shelf up there. They'll be potted on in the next couple of days because things like these lettuce, you know, once they get to Christmas, they'll be dead, they'll be gone, and we'll want more lettuce. I'll keep sowing the salad trays. I'll sow another one this week and keep sowing more lettuce seeds and growing them on. You might get a frost that just wipes everything out and you might need to start again. If you've got a tray of seedlings, you can. So keep that availability coming. Don't, don't stop sowing seeds and growing plants. It, it will work out even if you don't use them, just a couple of quid that you've wasted in seed and all your compost and dead plants, if you've got them, will go in the compost heap anyway. So you're not really losing anything, but what you gain is far more important, that continuation of crops. Well, hopefully these three videos have given you an insight into what I do over winter and how I approach things. Uh, and how I grow all the way through winter as much as I possibly can. So, yeah, we'll see now what, what exactly happens. Hopefully everything will be bountiful and we'll have no problems, but you never know. Anyway, that's it for now. Look after yourselves, everyone. Please stay safe, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Tarana.